me. Now, before we get into the video, I actually got a few words I want to say. I got a few thoughts coming to mind. This past Wednesday, we witnessed in shock as one of the most amazing vocalists in the rock and metal world in recent years sadly passed away. Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder passed away this May the 11th. And judging by what the band had posted on their social medias, he took his own life. His death will possibly be ruled as a suicide. And that leaves us with two questions. First, why do those that are so good at what they do pass away so early? Second, why do those that are so good at what they do and pass away so early are almost always related to rock and metal? Because if you think about it, over the course of the past 30 years, we witness some of the most tragic passings in our little wonderful, wonderful world. We witnessed, for example, in 1994, Kurt Cobain taking his own life on April 5th. On that very same day, but in 2002, Lane Staley passed away. Although his physical and mental condition kind of predicted it, we, we kind of saw it coming. And in most recent years, we witnessed the deaths of Chester Bennington, Chris Cornell, Vinnie Paul, many of the most iconic uh, musicians and vocalists on the rock and metal uh, genre, on the rock and metal world. But almost every single one of these passings has a common tie, a common ground, if you will, which is suicide. And with that being said, I want to say two things. First, this is a time when we must all gather together, fans, musicians, producers, everyone, and realize the reason why rock and metal are so beautiful and why we love them so much. Because it allows these tortured souls to express themselves to the fullest. It allows these tortured souls to put their feelings out in a way that no other musician on the face of planet Earth can do. And that's something we must be thankful for as we gather together to celebrate their legacies, their lives and their careers. That's what makes metal and rock so beautiful and that's what I will always hold dear about rock and metal music. It is truly beautiful when you see when you look into the lyrics of a song or when you listen to a melody and when you see the expressions of whoever plays it, the feelings, the thoughts being poured authentically into that song. That is beautiful. And second, if you know someone with suicide thoughts, if you know someone who is somehow thinking about ending his or her life, you only got one thing to do. It is way simpler than anything else. Reaching out. You can only say, I'm here for you, or you can only ask if that someone wants to talk. But, trust me, you reaching out to someone when they are having those kinds of thoughts is one of the most beautiful things you can do. It's perhaps the, the noblest act of humanity you can do nowadays. So, if you know someone that is thinking about ending his or her life, who is having suicidal thoughts, and you don't know what else are you going to do to save them, reaching out can be the solution. If you reach out, if you offer something to, their, to that person, whether it is just a hug or some comfort words, if you simply say, I'm here for you, 
that will probably make a huge difference in that person's life and in that person's world. With this being said, I want to send my heartfelt condolences to the Black Dahlia murder crew, to Trevor's friends, fans and family. Rest in peace Trevor, you did great. Now let's get to the video. channel this is Alex and oh my god Dios mio it feels so good to be back in here it's been more than a week since I last uploaded a video on the channel and we have quite a lot of stuff to uncover on May 6th creator released a new single Ibaraki Three Days Grace and Hailstorm released their latest albums and during the course of this past week Behemoth released a new single and unveil details about their upcoming album Opus Contra Naturam due to be released September 16th and Bloodhunter just released the last single before unveiling the price of the knowledge that is to say before releasing Knowledge Was The Price on May 27th through Maldito Records and speaking of Bloodhunter it is of Bloodhunter that we are about to talk today because they have just released their last single before the release of Knowledge Was The Price on May 27th, a week from this upcoming Friday. A song called Never Let It Rest with the guest vocals by uh, Tim Ripper Owens, a former vocalist for Judas Priest and Ice Nerd. And as the day uh, of the release grows closer and closer for Bloodhunter, the Galician metal band continues to explore uncharted territory. Now, as you, as you know, on the Forsaken Idol, they went for a slower song, a more dramatic input, if you will, with clean vocals done by Rosalia Sainan from Tyrion. Now, this song is more death metal-like. It is not as slow as the Forsaken Idol was, it is far more energetic, far more uplifting, far more Bloodhunter-ish, if you will. It is also a very unusual song, because it is a lot more progressive, but we will get there in a minute. But it is a song that reminds me of the classic metal, the beginnings of metal in the 70s and the 80s, and you can thank Tim Ripper Owens for that amazing vocals provided by a former vocalist for Judas Priest and Ice Dirt and another amazing single by Bloodhunter to hype us up for May 27th. Knowledge was a price to be released a week from this upcoming Friday through Maldito Records. And now without further ado and before I get deep down into the single, let's check let's check out a bit of Bloodhunters Never Let It Rest with Tim Ripper Owens. Now, as I said before, if you take The Forsaken Idol as a previous example, you will realize that that song is much more mournful, much more sorrowful, much more deeper and much slower, perhaps unlike anything Bloodhunter had ever done before. However, Never Let It Rest is much more uplifting, much more ener energetic and also uh, much more progressive. Take this as an example. If you listen to the song for the first time, or better yet, if you open the video for the song on YouTube, the first thing you will ever see is Dani Arcos and Guillermo Starless, at least I think that's Guillermo, playing something that I never thought Bloodhunter would include in their songs. 
that being acoustic guitars. And that gives the song a much more progressive approach, a much more progressive intake. And it actually reminds me of a band, I'm sure you all know who that band is, but it actually reminds me of a band who still plays that metal, but also likes to go for softer songs, for more mellow structures and sections. That band being Opeth. And you have lots of examples in Opeth. You have To Bid You Farewell, their first ever completely clean vocal ballad. You have Damnation as a whole, songs like Widow Pain, uh, In My Time of Need, Closure, Hope Leagues, you have Burden from Watershed. You have lots of examples in Opeth. And the intro to Never Let It Rest reminded me a lot of Opeth, but it also made me realize that Bloodhunter have been exploring with various metal subgenres over the course of the past three singles Never Let It Rest included. On A Twist of Fate to Come they explored classic death metal with the blast beats, with the riffage, with the growlings and the screams. On The Forsaken Idol they went for that uncharted territory, they went for those clean vocals, but at the same time they explored and they went into the territory of death doom metal with that slower, somber beating, with the powerful guitars that seem to be crying. A lot of death doom influences on the Forsaken Idol. And now on Never Let It Rest, not only are they exploring with um, progressive metal, but they are also exploring with classical metal. And that explains the inclusion of Tim Reaper Owens in the song. Reaper gives the song a more classic metal vibe, pretty much like Judas Priest did in the early years, in the 70s and in the 80s. Pretty much like Black Sabbath did in the early years. Pretty much like Iron Maiden still does. So, the inclusion of Tim Reaper Owens is like you stepping into a time machine and going back to the 70s when it all started. Going back to 1970 when Black Sabbath released their self-titled self album and all of a sudden created a new genre. A much more aggressive, much more darker genre of rock than we were used to. The inclusion of Tim Reaper Owens is like you stepping into that time machine and going right back to where it all began. And that's absolutely amazing. Bloodhunter struck gold not only with the progressive acoustic intro, but also with the inclusion of Tim Reaper Owens. Which is a thing that I really like. You see, Tim Reaper Owens, he never comes to fully sing on Never Let It Rest. It is almost like he's either screaming or doing, or doing rap. And that is amazing because not only those who have never listened to him get to see what he sounds like and get to see the way he sings and the way he acts, but he, with that style of singing, he creates the perfect combo with Diva Satanica screaming and growling. Tim Reaper Owens rapping and screaming cleanly gives room for Diva Satanica's voice to be heard, for those screams and those good roles to be absorbed, and for her potential and all her talent to come forth. And that is absolutely amazing. I couldn't think of a better guest vocalist to fit in Never Let It Rest than Tim Reaper Owens if Bloodhunter struck gold with the inclusion of Rosalia Sarem in The Forsaken Idol then our Galician friends have absolutely hit the jackpot with including Tim Reaper Owens in Never Let It Rest. Now, so far I have analyzed the technical standpoints, if you will. I have analyzed the performance, I have analyzed the voices, I have analyzed how great they sit together, I have analyzed how much of an advantage the inclusion of Tim Reaper Owens in the song is, and I have analyzed how much effort Bloodhunter is doing into exploring different subgenres in metal. But there's one thing that is bigger than all of that in Never Let It Rest, and it, that is what I really want to point out in the song, the lyrics. Times are still unprecedented. 
we're still dealing with a pandemic that by this time we thought was over. We're trying to redo our lives the best we can. We're trying to get back to our normal routine. Blood Hunter is doing shows again. A lot of bands are doing shows and touring around the world and releasing albums. Resuming their metal routines before the pandemic hit. Not only that, but we are in the middle of a war. And not only are we in the middle of a war, the permanent threat of a nuclear war hangs upon our heads. Things can go down at any moment. The, the, the previews for the war are not the best. People are doing the best they can to protect themselves. Some are fleeing, some are fighting, some are seeking for refuge. But we are dealing with something that we have never dealt at least since 1945. And for those two reasons, for the fact that we are still dealing with a pandemic and for the fact that a potential nuclear war is upon us, Never Let It Rest is the perfect song for these unprecedented times. It is very uplifting, it is very energetic, but not only it is the perfect song for our collective crusade in avoiding war and getting through with this pandemic, it is also the perfect song for your individual crusade. Because the way I see it, when I look into the lyrics of Never Let It Rest, it is a call to your own. It is a call to your roots. It is a call for you to do your best, to put everything and anything you have into everything you do and to never stop setting for less. Hence why good, better, best, never let it rest. So this is a call for you to wake up, to keep grinding, to not give up on your goals. This is a call for you to be the best version of yourself, to be the best that you can be. And this is a message that a lot of bands are including in their songs nowadays. Uh, Arch Enemy actually does that a lot with songs like um, The World Is Yours or War Eternal. Uh, so this is also a very, very positive point because it kind of deconstructs the preconceived idea that metal is satanic, that metal is associated with negativity, that metal is associated with anger and disgust with the world, when this song proves exactly the opposite. Metal can be associated with happiness, metal can be associated with motivation, metal can be associated with positiveness, and Blood Hunter are trying to tell us that metal can be positive, metal is positive, and metal will be positive from now on. But there's another message that is present in the lyrics that I want to highlight out. When you have an opportunity, don't waste it. If you have the chance to do something you've always wanted to do, if you have the chance to claim profits from that something that you've wanted to do, then do that something. Claim those profits. Don't waste any time seizing opportunities. Because there is no worse feeling than when you let an opportunity pass you by and then you see someone seizing those opportunities for you. You will feel sad, you will feel disgusted with yourself, it will take you on a downward spiral mentally and I think that is something that we don't need in these unprecedented times plagued by war and plagued by a pandemic. So beyond the positive believe in yourself kind of message that Blood Hunter conveys in the song, I think that the seizing of opportunities in the right time is another message that never let it rest conveys. Not only that, but don't waste any time searching for what you can have. And if you have opportunities in front of you, don't let time pass you by. Seize them. Don't waste any time because if you wait, 
A lot of things around you will happen, a lot of circumstances will unfold and like the lyrics say, the time will never be right. So never let it rest, seize those opportunities, be the better version of yourself and be as positive as you can. Life will follow its course and you will only change for the better. That's it guys, let's call it a day for today, don't forget to like, to comment and to share the video with your friends and family. Also don't forget to subscribe the channel, activate the bell so you don't miss on anything that Metalholic has to bring you in the foreseeable future. We have quite a lot to uncover on May 6th. Creator released a new single, Midnight Sun with Sofia Portnet. Also Ibaraki, Three Days Grace and Hailstorm released their latest albums. And also during this week, Behemoth finally released Of My Herculean Exile Into The World. They've been teasing that song in their North American siege tour with Arch Enemy. Finally released it this past Wednesday along with the announcement of a new album, Opus Contra Natura, their 12th album coming out September 16th. So don't miss it. And also save the date, May 27th, a week from this Friday, Bloodhunter will release their third album, Knowledge Was The Price, through Maldito Records, succeeding The End Of Fate in 2017. That's all I have got to tell you today. This was Alex, this was Metalholic. Hell Metal!